This video you're about to watch is about a guy who had a unique near-death experience where he encountered some extraterrestrial beings or what he considered, you know, to be extraterrestrial beings. And uh, the main thing that's unique about his NDE is he felt like he shouldn't go towards the light and he went towards the void or the darkness instead. I've talked about this very thing on the channel and shared content that talks about this as well. Now, a few of the things that these beings ended up telling him, I don't necessarily 100% agree or resonate with. These beings could be trickster beings and more than likely they are, but take from this what resonates with you and enjoy the content. I need, I need okay. to get this. I need to get it out. What I remember from the experience was I remember a dark tunnel. I went towards the darkness. I kept going towards the darkness. I, I was I didn't want to go towards the light. I started talking to these beings and they explained to me that I had passed away. I couldn't see their face, but they were 12 foot tall, if not taller. But now to this day, the more I learn about it, I do know I'm from there. And aliens are real. And they're, they're very loving. An alien would not hurt you. I, not these guys. I was, uh, it started out in the morning and I went to a friend's house and she was moving and there were some other people there that I didn't know. And we were drinking and one of the guys there had a big dog that was uh, like out of control and it, it had to be put on a horse tranquilizer. Well, this guy had put the horse tranquilizer in one of my beers. And so that's how that happened. I didn't actually take it. I, I literally was tried to be murdered, I think. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what the reason for it was. But so that's how that took place. The guy tried to kill him. And it, it, it literally, I flopped around on the floor like a fish, you know, out of water. And, it was an experience, I tell you. It's, uh, be careful what you pick a drink up in public. I was around 24 or 20, so, you know, I was very naive and very not cautious about anything, you know. I thought I was around safe people because I've known them, you know, for a few years and never done anything, you know. It wasn't my friends there that did it. It was some guy that was their friend. And they, he was just there to help them move. So it's like a moving party. I don't know if you ever heard of anything like that. You buy the beer and pizza and move, you know? So, but that's how that happened. I don't remember nothing. All I remember is drinking a beer and that's the last thing I remember until I woke up in the hospital. Well, I actually remember on the way to the hospital, my friend rushed me to the hospital and got pulled over. And when she got pulled over, they realized that I was OD. And they put me in a, they called the ambulance and I arrived at the hospital, but I don't remember none of that. I don't remember going into the hospital. I don't remember nothing about the hospital until I woke up. And when I did wake up, I didn't even know what was going on. I, I, I didn't know why I was in there. And then that the doctors told me what, what had happened. Just six months ago, I woke up out of a dead sleep and I turned over and I woke my wife up and I explained the whole thing to her. But I couldn't remember it until that night. I remember when my friend got pulled over, they put me in an ambulance and then I I remember I died in the ambulance. I remember going in and out of my body. 
and I was riding up above the ambulance, like, like floating above the ambulance and looking down on myself. And they were, they were trying to save my life. And that happened twice during the ride to the hospital. After I remember floating above the ambulance, as I was in the hospital, they were trying to bring me back. And, uh, what I remember from the experience was I remember a dark tunnel. I went towards the darkness. I kept going towards the darkness. I, I was I didn't want to go towards the light. There there was no really there wasn't a real bright light or anything. It just it was real faint in a distance and so I went towards the darkness and I just kept going that way. It made me feel more comfortable, you know, and, and, and when I get there, I don't, I don't remember sitting down, but I was sitting on something and it was super cold there. Um, and, and, it, and the smell was like ancient, like really old smell. Like, you know, when you walk into an older house and <clears throat> It just, you can smell the oldness of it, but just, it smelled like that, but ancient. And so I, I find myself sitting down on, on like, I don't know what it was. Maybe I was floating. I don't know. Cause I couldn't see my arms. I couldn't see my legs. I, I didn't move my head. It was all telepathic. Um, but then my peripheral vision, I seen two two beings um and they were just chiseled you know they were really built um and, and and i can remember the smell to this day but i couldn't remember it like you know until f five six months ago <laughs> you don't even know the feeling that you have there it is so much love that you will never find this this kind of feeling on earth ever. You you just won't. It it's bliss. It's it's just it's eternal love. It just it it makes you almost want to cry because it's so overpowering of anything, any other thought or expression or, or feeling that you might have had in your your life. It's 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 overwhelming. You could sense it, and that's how I knew. I didn't know vibration back then, but now I do. So that's how I know it's the feeling of a vibration. It's 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 overwhelming. The the love is just so taking, you know. But at the same time, it's hard to go. Yeah, okay, I'm dead. Let me stay then. <laughs> you know, I'm, I don't know I'm from here. But now to this day, the more I learn about it, I do know I'm from there. And aliens are real. They're they're very loving. An alien would not hurt you. I, not these guys. I mean, they didn't touch me or anything. But that's the energy that they carry. I couldn't see their face, but they were 12 foot tall, if not taller. But all I could see was down to the bottom of the stomach and the top of the chest. I couldn't see their faces, heads, nothing, arms, anything. But I can only tell you, I used to work out and they were cut and they were big. So it, it, there were stars everywhere. There, that's all you could see was stars in the background. But now remember, I didn't move my head. I didn't move. I was sitting still, but I could see everything behind me, in front of me, beside me. And I started talking to these beings and they explained to me that I had passed away and, and that I belong there. This is, this is your home. This is where you come from. And I was like, no, this isn't where I'm from. I, I this isn't where I live, man. And they go, well, you died. And then I got scared because I thought, I thought I'd, Okay, I'm dead, you know, is this hell? What? Where's God? I, am I getting judged? 
and they kind of looked at each other and one of them said to the other why is it they think every why is it everybody thinks they're getting judged and i said i don't know i don't know why you tell me where's god i want to talk to god and 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 they called me down you know and, and i didn't believe them because i didn't see god and and i've gone to church you know from the age of 9 up until i was you know i just a couple years back i quit going but uh and then they 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 stopped talking to each other but but i didn't move my lips and they didn't who i couldn't really see their heads i could just see like up to here it was like everything faded out and then i uh to prove to me that i did die they showed me a porthole and it was probably 6 foot by 6 foot and it was like an oval shape and as i looked in there i seen i seen i was in the hospital bed and all my friends were standing around me around the bed and there was police officers there and i kind of got freaked out cuz i'm not one to talk to police you know that's just how i was raised i kind of lived a rough life not kind i did i did live a rough life but so when i seen that i don't remember the conversation that we had after that other than well do you want to go back or do you want to stay you belong here this is where you're from and i told them again i don't belong here this is not my home I don't i'm not like you guys and they tried to assure me that's where i'm from and they like i said they asked me if i wanted to go back and, and, and then finally i said yes i want to go back i don't belong here and they also told me that i was chosen for this and they they wanted me to stay but i wanted to go back but they said the only way you can go back is if you promise to go learn as much as you possibly can and i said well yeah i want to go those are all my friends of course i want to go home and i i uh i don't know it was i just i woke up in a hospital and and that was my experience with it in in the feeling is yeah there's no feeling like it you you will never feel this feeling until you pass away and i promise we're eternal beings we live forever and ever we do not die there's no such thing as death now i know this because i i wouldn't say i was an evil person but i didn't care about myself now by reading the bible i know that many different bibles I, i don't know i just it's hard to follow a bible now i can't not that i don't believe in god i think he is there but i don't think i was worthy of seeing god yet i don't know where he was but he wasn't there unless he was portrayed as god they told me there is no wrong doing that's what they told me they also said go have fun have as much fun as you possibly can go experience everything to go learn as much as i can try to raise vibration i didn't know what vibration was at that time and all i wanted to do was go home so i agree i'm going home What do I care? I'm going to lie to anybody. I'm going to my friends. I'm not passed away or whatever they call it, you know. I'm not dead. You know, so I I was I, I was just to spread the word to let everybody know that 
this is what it is. I came back here to learn. I'm going to at least do what they asked me to do. But this didn't happen until like six months ago I started doing this. And I've come a long way with it. My message is to raise your vibration. Get in tune with yourself. Find yourself. Find your flaws. Find out what you can do to be a better person. Because they want you to be the best version of yourself. That's what they want. About four years ago, I went through a depression. Uh, and I had planned out my suicide. Obviously, I didn't fall through with it, but my next door neighbor was a tattoo artist. And I asked him if I could borrow his machine. And he let me borrow it. And I fell in love with it and it gave me hope because I, I had an injury with my back uh, at work. So I, I can't I can't work. I barely can walk. So as far as the tattoos, it saved my life again. So I taught myself how to tattoo. Don't judge my work by what I look like. I mean, I, I can do some pretty, pretty good work. I don't work in a shop. I work at home. Uh, it, it gave me it gave me life back. And, and the reason why I wanted it to look so dark is because I want the people that do judge to look at me. And I want them to look at me twice. I want them to I want to let them know that judging is not OK. What, what makes you better than me? You know, I just because I have a tattoo on my face, well, that guy over there has got a tattoo on his foot. Does that make him better than me? And, and, and that's my message with this. So people misunderstand, and it teaches me to stay away from them, folks. I don't even need to waste my time with it. All I can mention to them is change your ways because it's not the way you should be. And it, believe it or not, 80% of this world is that way. I've been in Detroit airport and I shut the airport down. They, they just all stop and look. And this is Detroit. So, I mean, that's just proves right there that, you know, this is way, way far jump, you know, as far as it's not evil. This is not why I did it. It does my homework for me. And that's why I have, and I'm covered head to toe. I did them all myself. How many people do you know done that? I'm, I'm big with kids. They're scared at first, but then they warm up to me. And I, and I like kids. I've, I've raised my own. Um, it's not an easy job, but, but it is fun to watch them grow into what they are, you know, become. And some kind of hide and, you know, some just come up to me and say, wow, that's really cool, man. Is that a tattoo? Well, yeah, it is. It's, it's not painted on. <laughs> it doesn't come off. But I personally like it because this is what taught me how to do it. I wasn't an apprentice. I, I didn't have to go through nothing. You know, I taught myself and it, it brought my life back to me. So like when people make comments, it, it, it offends me, but I, I don't, I don't know how to really get a comeback to him without being rude, you know, but, but that's what I'm trying to fix in myself because I have a really bad temper and I'm quick to jump, you know? So, you know, you just, you got to work on yourself you, you, and that's what life is about. Life is about fixing yourself and don't worry about others. Worry about yourself. Because in the end, you're the only one that can save your soul. You might have a body, but inside that body is that guy that talks to you. That's your soul, your heart. Think with your heart, not your head. And I, I can't get I can't get no more blunt than that. You know, it's like I said, I've been there. And and I and I'm very lucky to have a second chance to come back and fix it.
because maybe there is other realms, you know. Maybe there's a better realm. Maybe heaven is up there, and I just wasn't, I wasn't worthy of it yet. But I'm a chosen one, and they told me this. That's all they said is, I'm chosen. And, and now I did a lot of studying. That's all I do all day because I don't work. I just study. That's it. They told me to come learn. That's what I'm going to do. Now that I had this experience six months ago when I woke up, that's that's what I'm here to do. I think they're looking for some type of information about something. They're looking, I think personally, I, they didn't say this, but this is what I think they're doing is looking for a right answer to something. I don't know. That's just my interpretation of it all. To raise your vibration, uh, first you got to be able to look through your third eye, which is your pineal gland. And you know that feeling you get when, like you can feel somebody standing behind you and you turn around and that person's there. That's your intuition. That is your vibration. You are feeling that. And that's how it works up there. So that's that's where I get that. But I had to come learn that. They didn't tell me that. I had to do it myself. So this is how I know you need to save yourself. You need to become... I think there's other levels. I think I was at the, the very first realm. In between Earth and there. I think that's where I was. I don't know for sure. I won't find out until I go back, but supposedly I've planned this whole thing out before I came here because I'm not from Earth. <laughs> I'm, I'm an angel. From doing my homework, that's what I've come to. So, and I know to the naked eye that hasn't experienced anything like this, I can promise you, keep studying. Raise your vibration, change your food habits, quit eating meat, because we're not meat eaters. I do not eat meat. Um, I eat fruits and vegetables. You, you, I forget what the word is, but you have to, it's something about crystallizing. Um, and that's what's going on with the earth right now is it's, it's changing vibration. And with the solar eclipse, in, in, in the solar flares that are going on right now, those solar flares put out energy. So you have a way, go sit by a tree, ground yourself, take your shoes off and go sit in the grass. Be one with nature. That's my recommendation. And I think you will find you, your ego will change, your demeanor, it will all change. It'll come to you. It's really slow, though. If you want more, just check out this next video and get ready to be blown away. This has been the AJ Parr Spiritual Journalist Podcast. Please like, share, and subscribe.